Greetings from Alaska. This is Fred Roll, Curry Home Tribal Council member from Dillingham, Alaska. Um, here to share uh, an encounter that happened. This was in uh, early summer of 94. Um, Huckleberry Island, as we call it, is at Lake Aleknagik, uh, just north of Dillingham, approximately 25 miles. Uh, it's relatively, it's a large island in the middle of Aleknagik. And uh, there's custom log homes, beautiful, just beyond beautiful. Uh, the scenery is just unmatched anywhere. Uh, anyway, I digress. So we're on Huckleberry Island, and one of the people I'm with is a caretaker from one of these cabins. Um, very, very nice cabin. Uh, Multi-story, flushing toilets. Uh, v good, very nice for a remote Alaska, trust me, a boathouse. Uh, it, this place is laid out. So, of course, we're young, we're having fun, and uh, one of the guys with us, uh, he's, he's no longer with us, so I won't, I won't use his real name, but uh, we'll call him Mike. Now, Mike was the boisterous one in the group. He, everyone knows that guy. He's just, you know, you tell, you tell an experience, he's got one better. Uh, it, it just whatever he was a little socially awkward let's call it so were there multiple were, were there about three four days at this point um subject to hairy man comes up and understand in the villages if if we shared an experience with somebody out in the bush we may speak about it every once in a while but we don't uh, it, it's not a constant topic that we discuss because culturally speaking we don't we don't uh, it's not discussed we don't chase after them we just something happens out there you leave it out there and then there's that's just how it is I, I don't know why uh, you would think small community everyone would be like hey the hairy man's over there you know that kind of stuff you would assume but it's not like that uh, I, every village you can think of uh, now if you bring it up and you're not some dumb gasaka, you know that they don't trust. You're gonna, you're gonna open the, spill the beans, you know. It, it's gonna, it's gonna go down. You're gonna hear a lot. Uh, coincidentally, uh, I'm gonna be doing an interview with a relative flying in from uh, Dillingham later this afternoon. Uh, just he called me last night and was like, "Hey, look, I'm gonna be in town. Let's let's get together and eat." And I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I haven't seen you in years, you know. And uh, just before we get off the phone, just out of curiosity, uh, I said, hey, you got any good hairy man stories? Yeah. And me and him grew up from knee high. So, and we've never discussed the hairy man. <coughs> so, it, it was kind of, I'll I let him say it in his own words. I don't, I don't think he wants to be on camera, but, you know. At least he, you can hear it from his voice. Um, and, and that's one of the main missions that I have. I'm going to share whatever anyone sends in in the email. Uh, AlaskanHarryManProject at gmail.com or nocomp907 at gmail.com. Uh, I'm going to share those for sure, even if I read them myself. But I want those, especially First Nations here in Alaska that have experiences, to uh, get, get on camera or at least record their voice, uh, you know. Uh, there, there's so much that people don't hear. Uh, goodness, just bringing up the hairy man to my cousin coming in. He had, count, I, I didn't even keep track, but just one after another of an experience. You know, and like I've said many times before, I'm not some Sasquatch whisperer or, you know, I'm not some, I don't know shit. It's just back home, they're they're all over the place, especially in certain areas. Don't I don't want to make it sound like every bush has a hairy man in it. That's not it. Uh, you get up the Nushigak River, you you go up the Nuyukuk, you go up the Agulawak, you get back in. They're they're there. There's no way around it. It's it's not a guesswork. It it just the interview will reiterate what I'm speaking to. Uh, there's a lot more going on 
and it's so it's so isolated and kept within itself that a lot of times uh, a lot of this information is just going going to waste you know and with all the missing people we have up here indigenous or otherwise it, it it's a disservice not to hear what's going on in these small places and 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 take it serious you know we're not a people that uh want to want to seek these things out uh it's not in our culture to uh, we don't make totem poles to them like you know they do down down in vancouver or, or bc or wherever and hey nothing against that culturally hey that's your culture cool uh, up here it's just not there's no no good about it none not that i've heard yet and I, i'm i'm open-minded I, i'm not gonna stay locked in on them just being no good. However, I don't, I, I don't trust them up here. Um, and when you hear from my cousin on, on the next video, you'll see why. Uh, Cause not a one of them involves any kind of friendship, friendly kind of activity. It just don't. So anyway, I digress. On We're in that cabin about three days now mike <coughs> he he was so boisterous all the time that he even he even made a lot of noise going out to the outhouse and uh the flushing toilets they have a, a certain compost system thing so we couldn't use those out there whooping it up as young kids uh because the owners would know that it has been used due to its little compost tank thing so we're, we're using the traditional outhouse, which was a... I've seen trapper cabins that had... That could use some tips from this outhouse. It was well built, real nice. Um, anyway, so he, he was making noise going out to this outhouse. Now, uh, the time of year, it, it stayed pretty damn light around the clock. Uh, it never got dark. The sun set, but was back up, you know, three, four hours later. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, he he goes out and he's he's singing some song popular at the time. Uh, it may have been like maybe some CNC Music Factory, and I don't even know if it was popular. It's popular there because everything's kind of behind because it's a remote village. But anyway, he he was singing this song, and uh, I want to get the sequence right because it, it's relevant. He goes out there, does his thing, and he's singing louder on the way back. And he gets back up onto this wraparound deck where you can sit and, and, and see over to the boathouse and stuff. Perfectly lined up for sunsets to come right through all the big windows. It, just a beautiful place. He comes back up, and at this point, we're, we're drinking some coffee or something on the deck. Uh, he said, oh man, I gotta go again. So he gets up on the deck and immediately he's going right back to the outhouse. Well, as he, uh, it's a, it's kind of like a little wiggly path and the outhouse is just offset a little bit off to your left of this path. And the path continues and it wraps around to this big shed where they have some uh, canoes and some other stuff locked up, you know, where they store stuff for winter and chain it up so no one steals it, you know. <laughs> so... As he's going, he, he sees the door shut in the outhouse, and he was like, oh, someone beat me to it. And so, you know, he's he comes back up to the deck, and he goes, hey, who, who, who went out behind me? And we're like, it's just us here. Everyone else is, you know, still inside, either sleeping or getting something to eat, whatever it was. And so he, he was like, no, someone, I, I just saw, I, I just saw, the outhouse door shut. We're like, maybe it didn't shut all the way, and then it coincidentally, you know, we're on an island. That, you know, uh, bears were around, but they were over where salmon were in the creeks. You know, they weren't, they weren't worried about what the hell we were doing on an island. We were irrelevant. There was easier food, and so we're like, well, go see. You know, I'm. I, I'm not your keeper. I don't. I don't keep track of everyone that's with us. So he goes off. 
moments later, it, it was the loudest woman-like scream I've heard from a guy. Um, he shrieked and shrilled and uh, was running so fast and uncoordinated he kept falling. His feet were moving faster than he, he would he could coordinate him like he would he just kept doing that number and we're, we're laughing you know the the people we were with we assumed he was still messed up from drinking so we started poking fun at him hey sober up man get some coffee you gotta you know calm it down man and and he's he's like screaming frantically for help and then he says get a gun it's big so we're like oh shit you know probably a bear we go in, we grab firearms, whatever, we come back out, and we're still kind of laughing, like, man, he better not be drunk, because I, I, you know, I don't want to hear guns going off this early, yeah. So we go out there to take a look, and this outhouse had been shifted. Um, it was all cattywampus, it was just, it was offset. Now, um, in order to do that without just collapsing the whole damn thing, there was... There, there was, there had to have been a lot of force or weight to to shift that, because um, it was very well built. It was stick framing, but it had lap logs on the outside to match the cabin, and uh, it was very well built. Whoever did it was a contractor for sure, so it was built for snow load, and, and it's no joke. Um, but this place had been offset. We go around, we're looking for any sign, any any noises, any any movement of any kind just to um, to get an idea of what direction this bear may or may not be going. And so as we're sitting there, we're kind of, you know, doing this and we're kind of listening and looking at each other like, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything. And bears don't give a shit if you hear them. Let's, let's just be clear on that. If a bear is around and it's moving through the brush, it doesn't care. It's a bear. What's going to challenge it for going through except another bear or a bigger bear, you know, typically. So we're doing our thing. We're listening. We're looking at each other like, that. what the hell is that? Mike was in the cabin. So we, we go back uh, and ask him, hey, what direction did the bear go? He goes, it wasn't a bear. It wasn't a bear. And we're like, well, what was it, you know? He goes, it, 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 you know, he kept doing this number. And we're like, come on, man, spit it out. You know, what did you see, a hairy man? Did you see the hairy man? You know, he was like, yeah, 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 it was like a hairy man. What's a hairy man? And we're like, dude, the hairy man, calm down. What's going on? You know, what did you really see? He said it, it looked human-like. And we're like, yeah, that would, yeah, that'd be a lot of hair. Not fur, but hair. He's like, yeah. And we're like, yeah, there's a hairy man outside. And so immediately, um, the, the tone changed because there are no good experiences that I've heard of up here. It's always some form of an aggressive type, uh, anyway. So we decide okay, well, let's see if we could run it off. Because, again, typically scream, shake something, maybe throw something, and usually it take off. Usually. Um, but, again, usually we're the ones leaving as well. So <coughs> we figure we'll, we'll go and put some shots in the air if we see it and, and run it off and, and be done with it. Because the majority of us that were there already knew the hairy man was real and had our own experiences. And there's others there that have heard about experiences but never had one themselves, so they're very skeptical, even though everyone around them... Yeah, anyway, it, it's it's just how it is socially. People don't want to be viewed as some weirdo. Uh, I, don't, I don't give a crap. <coughs> we go back looking, and uh, this trail forks off, and there's other cabins on this island in different places uh, because it was whoever owned it originally sanctioned it off into lots and sold it off like that so we're following some of these paths that cut back and through on this island and we hit this one particular Y and then on 
the trail to the immediate right, it wise again. And so we were like, well, let's let's split this pie. I'll go down this trail. You go down this trail. Just don't. If you gotta shoot, don't don't shoot back towards each other. You know? Okay, we'll do that. Now it's taken way longer for me to tell you what happened as far as how it happened. This this all happened relatively fast. We're okay. I'm gonna go there. Don't shoot. Okay. You know? As I'm going down, and it the it kind of curves a little bit towards the right, but then you can see it kind of zigzags and goes back into the bush. This this trail. So I figured what I'll do is where it, where it cuts, I'm gonna stay in a little bit of the muskeg area there and just go along and see if, if it's coming out through the through the tree line there. Well, as I'm going, I hear a gunshot over to my left, but it wasn't the direction uh, my other buddy was going down on that path. It was a little bit further behind us on a on a different trail. So. We hear that, and we end up meeting up with each other, going back towards where that gunshot was, because we didn't know, it, it, it didn't sound like it came from our group, because our group was in a different direction. So, we get back over there, and it was another cabin owner on the other side of the island, and uh, we knew the guy uh, very well, uh, respected person back home I, I won't delve in it's too small to give away too much um, especially without his permission so he comes up and and he's got his hunting rifle in his hand and he goes that son of a bitch is huge it it, it tried breaking my door we just had the hairy man thing going on and we asked him how long ago he goes this was just a little bit ago I, it took me a while to get up the nerve to get the gun and, and come out and try to run it off and we're like okay well it shifted the outhouse over there at you know so, such and such cabin and uh, scared our buddy and we were just looking to run it off ourselves he goes well I'm I'll let you guys do that I'm gonna stay here I don't want to I don't want to be outside um, I asked him, hey, how, how did it get in your door? Did it jiggle the knob or something? You know, I'm just curious, you know? And he goes, no, it, uh, until I pointed the gun at it, it, it was, it was just gently bumping against it, seeing how much force it was going to take to break it. Almost like it was like, knew exactly what it would take, but was kind of messing with him is, is the feeling he said he got. So we go back to what we were doing. And as we're going from that trail back to where the, the original Y was we went off on, uh, we ran into a, a couple other people that were with us over at that cabin. And they're armed, and they were saying, hey, we just saw the hairy man run across that opening, and then we heard this, the splash in the lake. So we're immediately we're like, oh, it's, it's swimming? Okay, boom, we take off. We head back over to the cabin. Just as we get up to uh, where the deck is that wraps around to the front where you can see the boathouse and, and that open area that these people were referring to, uh, I, I remember it was about the third step up. We heard a god-awful scream from right behind that outhouse. So we had run past this thing going to look at what we thought was the same one, and it was a different one that jumped in the lake. So... We couldn't, immediately we, we were like, uh, it, it dawned on us that we just went right past this thing. And we all had the same realization right then. We're like, we, maybe we should we should reevaluate where, where we're staying. Maybe we should go up to a ghoul walk or something, you know? Because typically when things like this happen and there's multiple in one area and there's always more than one and a lot of times one will show itself to distract the other ones getting out of there um but there's never any anything uh the it's it's never a happy story it's never a oh hey guess what you know they had berries they shared some berries no it actively trying to get into cabins um it's just, it's not, I don't know if it's even the same 
the same thing as what people deal with down in the States. Uh, especially hearing from that relative, as soon as I brought up, hey, you got me good Harry Man stories, immediately he had encounters on the Nuya Cuck. Like, same same area, as a matter of fact. Uh, the fishing game cabin that's just uh, outside of Kalaganik is where his experience happened. And we were further up. We were further up by about 15 miles. So it was like the number two count tower from Tick Narrows we were in. But it's number three or four coming from the Kaliganik side up the Nia Cup. Anyway, he was in the first one by Kaliganik where his experience happened. But I just asked that one question. This is a lifelong relative and the floodgates opened. Uh and, and I hope I'm able to share a lot of that stuff, especially all Alaskans, but especially the First Nations, my, my fellow brothers and sisters, just to, uh, a lot of Hollywood gets one or two, and, and they don't really delve in, they'll, they'll hear one little experience, and then it moves on, they play some nice music, and then, you know, they'll, they'll blend in with another Native person speaking, and, and whatnot. Yeah, which is good. Uh, I'm not knocking that. Uh, there's there's a little more production than meat. You know what I mean? I, I want this to be uh, meat. Uh, like, let's get to the issue. Let's let's hear what happened. You know, and uh, I, I just want to try to find out why, especially in certain areas, these things want to get you. It's not a it's not a guessing game. Everyone I've talked to that's had an experience out that way, they not one of them had to just oh gee, did it, what did it want? What what was its intent? It, there's none of that. There, it's always it's always either they shot in the air, uh, it ran off, they they left. You know, as soon as they see the hairy man, they're they're freaking out of there, which is nine out of ten times. These things don't invoke. Let's let's get to know each other better. Every everything that happens, it, it's always whoever has the encounter leaves that area immediately. Like they'll eat you. You know that's that's all we've ever been taught, and that's all. I mean, I'm sure there's some anecdotal evidence of, of not so crazy encounters, not not so ominous, maybe curious and whatnot, and. I'm sure there are. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. There's just things going on with with how aggressive they are up here that just it, it seems like we're missing a piece of that puzzle. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. To the that I know that that wasn't much. It was more I wanted to share a little bit, but uh, relay the the interview thing like I said I, I'm not sure if he wants to be on camera um, I will have his voice at least if he doesn't want to be on camera I'll just ask him questions and, and, and he can answer in his own words um, but I just I don't want it to be just my voice being heard um, so anyway thanks for listening and uh, stay tuned uh, I'm hoping to get that that interview posted as soon as I get it done. Uh, he's supposed to be landing here in a couple hours. So hopefully that goes smoothly. And uh, thanks again for listening.